Here's the girls waiting to go on stage. One hour to wait, and then they will be stars, we hope. Waiting for the show to start. We are going to have a great day. We have lots of entertainment planned for you with the help of JR and Denise Ussery of Spotlight Entertainment of Southwest Florida. We have military vehicles on display, a classic and muscle car show, face painting for kids, the Estero High School JROTC, the Estero Fire Rescue, the Lee County Sheriff's Office, and of course, free hot dogs cooked and served by the Tidewater Veterans Group. It's great to see everyone come out in support of our veterans and their families. Don't we live in a great community? Yes. At this time, I would like to introduce Pastor Kevin Morris of the Estero Community Church to give the invocation. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hear at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous part for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air came through through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet we Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, veterans, for your service as we salute you here on our Veterans Day weekend. We're going to do a little uh, Armed Forces medley for you. What I'd like for those who have served this wonderful nation, when you hear your fight song, please feel free to stand and be recognized so we can all salute and thank you.
Steve singing Ragged Oak Flag. I walked through a county courthouse square on a park bench. An old man was sitting there. I said, your old courthouse is kind of run down. He said, nah, it'll do for our little town. I said, your old flagpole has leaned a little bit, and that's a ragged old flag you got hanging on it. He said, have a seat. And I said, um, is this the first time you've been to our little town? I said, I think it is. He said, I don't like to brag, but we're kind of proud of that ragged old flag. You see, we got a little hole in that flag there when Washington took it across the Delaware. And it got powder burned the night that Francis Scott Key sat watching it right and say, can you see? And it got a bad rip in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson tugging at its seams. And it almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag, but she waved on though. She got caught with a sword at Chancellorsville. She got cut again at Shiloh Hill. There was Robert E. Lee, Beauregard, and Bragg, and the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. On Flanders Field in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. She turned blood red in World War II. She hung limp and low a time or two. She was in Korea, Vietnam, she went where she was sent by her Uncle Sam. She waved from our ships upon the briny foam, and now they've about quit waving her back here at home. In her own good land, she's been abused. She's been burned, dishonored, denied, and refused. And the government for which she stands is scandalized throughout the land. And she's getting threadbare, and she's wearing thin, but She's in good shape for the shape she's in. Cause she's been through the fire before. 
and I believe she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning, we take her down every night, we don't let her touch the ground and we fold her up right. On second thought, I do like to brag, cause I'm mighty proud of that ragged old flag. Another excellent performance. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. That is Steve. Thank you very much. He said, they give us the wrong code. We thought they needed touch and roll for quick energy instead of ammunition. He said that, and so now every year they send me a whole box of touch and roll. <laughs> I get, uh, I like music. My favorite uh, musician was Frank Sinatra. Uh, and I like to dance when I could, but until my feet gave out, and then I couldn't dance anymore. Bernie Lenhart, United States Marine Corps, 1944 to 1954. And this is my generation. Put your hands together for Bernie, thank you.
morning. I'm too tall for this thing. Let's move this thing out here. I'm too tall. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being on here. We are celebrating one of the great holidays in our country. In our country, it is by far the best. Very special. It is. You are the best. We're a nation founded on ideals. We are a nation founded on freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom in economies, uh, freedom to petition your government, freedom to speak freely. But all of those freedoms, that ideal that formed the greatest nation that has ever uh, been established on this planet has been protected by men and women throughout the years, the, throughout the 248 years plus, that have decided to lay their lives on the line in service to uphold our Constitution and to uphold the Republic. And so that's why Veterans Day is always very special to me. And for the men and women who are currently serving or who have served, you not only have my thanks, but you have the thanks of the people of Florida and the people of the United States of America. On the anniversary of the armistice that silenced the guns that ended World War I, and 70 years ago, Congress made November 11th a national holiday to honor the patriotism, service, and sacrifice of the veterans from all wars, as well as those who served in time of peace. Senator Daniel Webster said in 1834, God grants liberty only to those who love it and are always ready to guard and defend it. Fortunately, for 249 years, our nation has been blessed with patriots who embody Webster's words, dedicated to something greater than themselves, and step forward, ready to fight, and if necessary, to die to ensure that our liberty was defended. Their service spans every decade and continues to this very day.